Today we are going to talk about cells. When you hear the word cell, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? It may be that you think of a cell phone like this. Telephone companies divide cities, towns, and countrysides into lots of separate areas in order to provide the best service. Each area is called a cell. That's why mobile phones are called cell phones. They use signals from lots of different cells. What do you remember about the hives of honeybees? Their hives are made up of lots of different areas called cells too. Different activities occur in each cell. Another example that might help us understand cells would be a large multi-floor school building that has many classrooms. A teacher is in each classroom, similar to cells lined up one after the other inside beehives. The word cell describes one of many small parts that form a much larger area. One classroom is like one cell of many cells or rooms in a school, like a honeybee's cell is one of many cells in a hive. Because you're learning about the human body, you may have guessed that we're not going to be talking about cell phones or honeybees today. Instead, we will focus on human body cells. These cells were a mystery to people for thousands of years. No one even knew they existed. The invention of the microscope changed all of that. Microscopes magnify cells, making them big enough for the human eye to see. Last time, I mentioned a man whose book of microscopic organisms, or tiny living things, influenced the work of Anton van Leeuwenhoek. The man was an Englishman named Robert Hook. In one of Hook's first experiments with a microscope, he sliced open the stem of a cork plant and placed it under his lens. What he saw amazed him. The cork was made up of tiny walled spaces. These little boxes reminded him of the cells in a honeycomb. Hook was the first to use the term cell to describe what he saw through the microscope. We still use the word cell today when referring to these tiny little boxes of which all living things, both plants and animals, are made. All living things, no matter how big or how small, are made up of microscopic units called cells. Cells are the body's building blocks, the smallest units of life that can carry out the functions of a living thing. They are so small that they cannot be seen without the aid of a microscope. That's why we call them microscopic. The bacteria that Anton van Leeuwenhoek discovered are one-celled organisms but most living things on Earth have more than one cell. In fact, some have billions of cells. You are one of those creatures. You have millions and billions, maybe even trillions, of cells. You begin life as a single cell formed by the joining of two cells, one cell from your mother and one cell from your father. Your parents' two cells merged and became one joint cell, called a fertilized egg. Then that one cell divided into two cells that divided into two more. The cells divided again and again until pretty soon there were billions of cells. Your whole body is made up of these tiny building blocks. The human body is a collection of more than 200 different types of cells. Cells come in all shapes and sizes, depending upon the jobs they must perform. Bone cells build bone. Skin cells build skin. And muscle cells build your muscles. The shape of a cell usually reflects the role it plays in the day-to-day -day working of the human body. For example, red blood cells are shaped somewhat like shallow bowls. Just like bowls that can be used to hold things like cereal, milk, or ice cream, the bowl-shaped red blood cells hold and carry nutrients through your blood. Nerve cells have really long tails to send and receive messages quickly. 
See all the little branches on this nerve cell? Cells are like tiny chemical factories. Because they are living organisms, they need nutrients and air to stay alive. Your heart pumps blood to cells throughout your body, carrying food and oxygen to each cell. Your cells use these nutrients to form muscles, nerves, skin, and bone, and to help protect your body from disease. Living things do not last forever. Body cells has, have limited lives. Some cells get damaged when you get hurt. Others wear out over time. As cells die, the dead cells are replaced with new cells on a daily basis. Isn't that amazing? Let's look closely at a microscopic section of skin. Skin cells are packed tightly together to form a protective boundary between you and your environment. Do you see the layers of cells stacked one on top of the other? The old dead cells flake off and form a protective layer for the new cells that are constantly growing beneath. They grow, split, make new cells, and die. Some cells live for only a few days. Others live for years. Cells work together. They are organized into groups of cells that all perform the same function. These groups of cells are called tissue. Tissue is a collection of the same kinds of cells working together to do the same job. There are four main types of tissue and each type serves a different function. The four types of tissue are connective, muscle, nervous, and epithelial. What do you think connective tissue does? It connects. Connective tissue supports the body and binds other tissue together like glue. Your skeleton is made up of bone, a connective tissue that provides the structure or framework for your body. It contains cells that make the tissue strong and flexible. Fat is a connective tissue, padding your body and supplying it with energy. You may be surprised to learn that blood is also a connective tissue, but think about it. This liquid tissue flows throughout your entire body and connects all of its many parts. Muscle tissue helps your body move. It is the softest and most abundant tissue in your body. There are different kinds of muscle tissue. Your stomach walls are lined with smooth muscle tissue that helps digest your food. You would not be alive without cardiac muscle tissue. What does the cardiac muscle do? It is found only in your heart and its job is to pump your blood. Skeletal muscle tissue moves your bones. The long, thin strands of muscle tissue stretch and shrink in response to messages from your brain. As they shorten, they move the parts of your body. So connective tissue connects and muscle tissue moves your body parts. The third type of body tissue is nervous tissue. Maybe you can figure out what it does based on its name. What does it do? Nervous tissue runs through your body and connects to your brain. Nervous tissue serves as the messengers between your brain and body. Nerve cells within the nervous tissue sense a stimulus and carry electrical signals to and from the brain. Nervous tissue acts as the body's most important communication system. One example of how nervous tissue works would be when you touch something that is so hot you would burn yourself. Your nervous tissue receives the stimulus of extreme heat. The message is sent to your brain and your body sends a message back to the nervous tissue to tell your muscle tissue to jerk your hand away from the hot stimulus. This happens almost automatically without you having to think about it. What on earth do you think epithelial tissue does? Can you even pronounce that word? Let's try. Epithelial. What a big word for tissue that covers and protects. 
Sheets of cells packed closely together make up epithelial tissue. Does this picture look familiar? Remember, those are the skin cells that form the outer layer of your skin. You're looking at the epithelial tissue that prevents bacteria from entering your body. This thin, tough covering protects your body and its organs. Epithelial tissue is also found inside your body. It forms barriers to protect the inside of your nose, mouth, throat, and stomach. Everything you do, from breathing to eating to running, requires lots of working cells. They are truly the building blocks of your body. Cells are organized into tissues, grouped by the similar job that they do. Tissues are organized into groups that work together to do similar jobs as well. You will learn all about these groups of tissues the next time we're together.